It is now. Love and life, Casey. How about you? Looking forward to uh, next week. How about you? We could all have a seat. Party start. I would like to call the meeting to order. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic, stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, welcome, everyone. Um, I do want to make two announcements. One, we did hold an executive session yesterday for legal issues. Uh, and tonight, prior to this meeting, we also held a, uh, an executive session for personnel reasons. All right, uh, next on the agenda, Commissioner Evans, do we have uh, some opening comments? Yes. Hi, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. Our meetings are neutral ground, a place to hear and be heard. Board of Commissioners is here to represent everyone in town, and we strive to be sure our decisions address the needs of all. We're all in this together. Just a reminder, only questions or statements regarding an agenda item will be entertained under citizens to be heard at the top of the meeting. All other matters will be recognized during public comment at the end of the meeting. Old Lang Syne, wow. Another year is almost over. The weather outside is frightful, but seeing all of you here is delightful. Good one. Hey, <laughs> I get paid for that sometimes. <laughs> Thank you for braving the elements to join us tonight. It's been an honor serving you in 2022 and hope you're all starting to see the promise of a new count starting to take shape around us. Please be safe on the roads this holiday weekend, especially with the deep freeze following all of this precip uh, precipitation. And if you drink, don't drive. It's just stupid and reckless. It could cost the lives of the innocent driver who chose not to drink and drive. So make the road safe so that everyone can enjoy. Hallelujah. Last Wednesday, the Chester County Board of Commissioners unanimously voted to approve Lerda. <laughs> and now the real work begins. Shopping the idea to some already successful small businesses that I think you might all like to see put down. Yeah. No, stay muted. <laughs> um, you might like to see uh, come here. Alerta gives us major tools needed to take town to a new level. Dream big or wake up small. Town Township's open for business. Remember when you're rushing around finishing up your holiday shopping and support our small businesses. They're the backbone of our community. These troubling times. For all the bad press Coatesville Area School District receives, there was a surprisingly little notice given to some very uplifting news events of the past couple of weeks. But I thought I'd share them. A couple of weeks ago during a class at a Coastville High, students sprang into action and used the Heimlich maneuver to save the life of another student who was choking. Another uplifting story is about the Coatesville Middle School robotics team advancing to the state finals by winning an innovation project award for an efficiently designed robot. The state finals will be on January 28th. And lastly, <clears throat> it's not just us. An article published on December 14th on Yahoo News read, fake active shooter threats continue to plague schools across U.S. It detailed an NPR story of over 180 reports of swatting incidents in 28 states from September 13th through October 21st. And since then, incidents have continued with the same level, if not a greater level of intensity and consistency. It's not okay, but it's not just us. Lastly, be the joy in someone's holiday this year. The holidays can be a lonely and brutally depressing time for many. If you know anyone who has no one, has recently lost, lost a loved one, is homebound, anything, just be the joy in their holiday. Take a moment to drop by and bring them some love. Compassion 
empathy, peace, and love. These are the greatest gifts any of us can give. Happy holidays, everyone. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Mark. Mark. Beautiful. All right. Uh, next on the agenda, we do have the uh, citizens to be heard for uh, agenda items. Can I be upgraded? For uh, none in this uh, in this room. Anybody in the Zoom world? No rush. We have all night before the storm. There, there's nobody with me. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda. Folding. Yeah, Cheryl. I think it's muted. I see a mute sign. I think you need to. Un there you go. Almost. You're still muted. I'm sorry, Cheryl. There you go. Did that work? Yes. Okay. Um, under the ordinances where you're raising or instituting new taxes, could you explain them as you go through them, what the tax was and what it is now and what the difference is? So there's no, no changes in the rates for 2023. At all, we yeah, correct. But we have to in the ordinance set out what the taxing rate is. So all of those rates will remain the same for 2023. Okay, that would be helpful to say that. We just did. No, no, no. But I, I know that. I didn't hear what. <laughs> I'm saying in your agenda it would be nice to to have said that. That's all. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Cheryl. All right, next we have township solicitor, Miss Camp. Thank you. The first thing is a decision in order for 4102 Associates LLC. They're the owner of a 6.93 acre parcel at 4060 Edges Mill Road. They filed a conditional use application seeking to develop the property with a one story 41,000 square foot building to be used as flex space. The board held the hearing on, uh, originally it was October 27th, 2022, but then it was continued. Um, to November 17th, 2022. And I have a proposed order that I had circulated to the board. Uh, Mr. Nagel represented the applicant and had provided me with, um, after I had drafted the decision, had provided me with conditions that the applicant agreed to accept. And I had already encapsulated all those conditions into the order. So um, the proposed order would grant the conditional use approval. The conditions are as follows. The flex space building would be developed in accordance with the testimony and evidence presented at the hearing, as well as the plan that was presented at the hearing. A such plan is revised to comply with the conditions of this approval, as well as to obtain land development approval. The plan has to be revised to comply with the latest township consultant review letters, which are set forth in this order. The applicant must obtain all necessary outside agency permits in order to develop the property, which would include highway occupancy permit for the driveway, NPDES permit, planning module approval or exemption from the same. The fourth condition is applicant would implement the changes to the plan that it voluntarily agreed to, which are outlined in the order in finding of fact number 63. All the lighting on the exterior of the building must comply with the requirements in the ordinance. All new light fixtures installed in the parking lot must be directed inward and downward appropriately shielded to prevent glare on adjacent properties. The exterior lighting must be operated on a timer that will turn the lights off after the business is closed. An applicant will not install any lighting along Edges Mill Road unless necessary to illuminate the access driveway. Applicant must provide energy efficient lighting fixtures. The architectural facade of the building must be substantially similar to the architectural rendering, which was admitted as Exhibit A6. And that was a change from the original submission that applicant made. And that was done to appease and um, with recommendations from the Historical Commission and the neighbors. Access to the property must be from the existing access drive. Applicant will prohibit truck traffic from turning left out onto Edges Mill Road and has to install appropriate signage. Applicants shall install additional landscaping, which is depicted on the landscape plan, which was admitted as Exhibit A-12. They must replace deciduous trees proposed along the frontage with evergreen trees. They are prohibited from using deep dynamic compaction to improve the subgrade. 
They must extend public water to the building and public sewer, and they must accept all these conditions, which the applicant, as I said, has indicated that they would do so. So that is the proposed order before you. If anybody has any questions, I can answer them. All right, commissioners, any questions? No, and again, I want to no. uh, applaud them for, uh, and Mr. Nagel for working so openly with the Historical Commission to make sure that we can all be good neighbors for a very long time. Comments? Uh, public comment at this time? Uh, none here in the room, Zoom world. There's no other questions. I will entertain a motion to approve the conditional use uh, for the property 4060 Edges Mill Road. So moved. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Tendero, second by Commissioner Evans. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Sounds good. Five zero. Right. Congratulations. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Denise, do you have you have this to them to sign? Okay. The second thing is a motion to consider granting preliminary and final subdivision and land development approval for Thorndale Real Estate LLC for 3205 Lincoln Highway. So applicant is the owner of the 10.52 acre parcel. It's located on the north side of Lincoln Highway near the intersection of North Bailey Road. The property is in the TV1 Thorndale Village Zoning District and the Lincoln Highway Overlay District Zone 2. Applicant proposes to redevelop the property as a shopping center in two different phases. Phase one, which applicant was permitted to commence without the need for subdivision or land development approval, was the renovation of the Kmart building. Applicant, um, I believe, has completed renovating that, but as two tenant spaces, one with 70,745 square feet for the Lomax carpet and tile retail store, and the second for an Aldi grocery store. Phase two, which is the subject of these particular plans that's before the board, is the subdivision of the property into three lots, the development of an approximately 2,336 square foot Chipotle restaurant with drive through and an approximately 2,208 square foot restaurant cafe with drive through The plans were prepared by Landcore Engineering Consultants, dated May 13th, 2022, last revised October 28th, 2022. So this follows up from the conditional use approval that was granted, as well as there was a zoning decision that granted variances for signage. The proposed decision would grant the preliminary slash final subdivision and land development approval subject to the following conditions. The development must comply with all relevant terms in the zoning ordinance, the subdivision ordinance, the stormwater ordinance, unless the board waives any of those provisions through this decision. Applicants shall comply with the latest township review letters which are again are listed in the motion. The plans contemplate certain waivers that are set forth on page three. <coughs> One is to allow the approval of a combined preliminary final plan. The second is to not require the plans to show all of the significant features within 200 feet of the property. The third one is to allow the sidewalks along Lincoln Highway to be constructed outside of the legal right of way. And that's based on limited available space um, along uh, North Bailey Road frontage, excuse me, along Lincoln Highway, and then for the sidewalk along North Bailey Road, the, the sidewalk would be constructed flush against the back of the curb, and that is because of the location of the fire hydrant and the utility poles um, in the area adjacent to the Audi parking lot. The fourth pr pr proposed waiver is to allow landscaping along North Bailey Road to be placed more than 10 feet from the right of way. The next is to use PennDOT's background growth rate in lieu of the 1.6, in lieu of 1.6 per year. And that, that's a typical, I actually think we should make a change to that. Every applicant seems to request that and we, we um, your traffic engineer does not have an objection to that. And then the last waiver is from the stormwater ordinance to allow certain 18 inch diameter pipes to be sloped at 0.5% to minimize trenching depths. So those are the waivers, and I may turn it over to Mr. Calagreco and the engineer if anybody has any questions on those, but let me continue to go through the motion. Um, applicant must comply with conditional use approval as well as the zoning decision. They must um, reimburse the township for any consultant review fees. They must execute development agreement, financial security agreement, and post financial security in an amount approved by the township engineer prior to the plans being released for recording. They must execute a stormwater operation and maintenance agreement and record it with the plans. 
They must secure all regulatory permits necessary to develop the property. All deliveries to the restaurant pad sites are restricted to hours when the restaurants are closed. And that was something that came out through the conditional use. Applicant must include this restriction on the plans and in the leases for those pad sites. Um, condition 11 deals with the waiver to the sidewalk along Lincoln Highway. And it suggests that the board will grant the waiver provided applicant prepares an easement agreement granting an easement over any area of the property where the sidewalk is located. So because they're not going to be putting it in the right of way, we need to make sure that there's an easement on the property to allow the public to utilize that sidewalk. Applicant must demonstrate to the board in writing that it has in good faith negotiated with Thorndale West LP, who owns the adjacent property along Lincoln Highway to the east, um, for permission to extend the sidewalk onto their land. And if applicant is able to obtain that approval, they are, they are required to extend the sidewalk to go onto that property. As far as the extension of the sidewalk onto the property along North Bailey Road, it's owned by Valley Run Shops Condominium Owners Association. That sidewalk actually will be within the right of way. And so this condition requires them to, um, to extend the sidewalk onto that property. Because of the cost to do the extensions beyond their property boundary, the applicant had requested that the board waive the fee in lieu of open space in the amount of $3,976.61. And I did speak with the township engineer who indicated that the cost to extend the sidewalk both on Bailey Road and Lincoln would be well in excess of that number. So that's, that is why I drafted it the way, but that obviously is for board discussion. Um, the next condition is that they prepare a reciprocal easement, which grants cross easements for any shared utilities. They must execute and record a new easement agreement that properly identifies the area of the existing private driveway in the rear. So Mr. Lehman pointed out that where the actual pavement is, is not within the boundaries of the easement. And so they need to try to fix that. Um, one of the things that came out in the applicant's stormwater report is that the existing stormwater basin located on the property to the rear um, it requires some repairs, and those are detailed in a report that Land Corps Engineering prepared dated October 28th, and this condition would require them to make those particular repairs. The rest of the ones are just typical standard prepare, um, record the plans, prepare a digital file, and provide uh, 11 by 17 format to the township. So those are the proposed conditions. If anybody has any questions about the plan. Mr. Colagreco and his team are here. If anybody has any questions on the waivers or anything on the motion, please, please let us know. All right, commissioners, any questions? Can you, can you talk about the basin for a minute? Um, what, what repairs are needed in the basin? Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hello. Brian Hi. Whitmore, from Brian. project engineer from Landcorp. Yeah, we prepared the inspection report and identified uh, just some minor maintenance was needed to the outlet structure. So it's a, it's a vertical standpipe with an outlet pipe that goes through the basin berm and outlets into the stream. So the, uh, the actual vertical standpipe, which is the outlet structure, it's just, it's old, it's an old metal pipe. So we're proposing that that be replaced essentially in its, in its exact same configuration, just with a newer material. And then the outlet pipe also was just feeling its age. It's an old metal pipe and it's just in need of replacement. So we're proposing it to be replaced in the exact same sizes configuration. So there's, there won't be any changes to the operations of the basin. It will just be with newer <coughs> materials. And that's the rear basin. Um, can you just describe to us what you're doing for the main site? You're, you're putting in some new stormwater, right? Yeah, so the, you know, as we all know, there, there's a substantial amount of green space that's being created with the, the landscaping and the channelization uh, island really proposed throughout the center. So that, you know, is one component of the stormwater management. And then for the compliance with the uh, stormwater management ordinances for peak rate control, there's a uh, stormwater management basin in the form of an underground stormwater basin that will be proposed under the parking lot in front of the Lomax building. And Lomax building, that will be... Um, just a combination of stone, pipes, uh, geotextile material that will be underneath the parking lot. And that would be completed <coughs> before construction begins on the pad sites, correct? It will be completed at the time of the site improvements for the pad sites. But a use and occupancy would not be granted 
for the pad sites until that work is done, Mark. Thank you. Are there any other changes from conditional use? Is the plan look <coughs> the same or is have things been changed? It's I I would say it's substantially the same as what we've been talking about. Um, you know, it's still two pad sites, commercial you know, commercial restaurant, fast casual restaurants with a drive through, uh, the sidewalk site improvements. Um, the plan, of the conditional use plan, has evolved to a land development plan. So there's a substantial amount of additional detail, uh, engineered detail that uh, really supports the the picture that we spoke about. At, you know, at length at the time of. So it's substantially similar. To, the land development plan is substantially similar to what the board had reviewed and we had discussed at the time of conditional use. Do you have a graphic to show us the sidewalk plans along Lincoln Highway? Yeah, I have a I have a, a board that I can put up on the easel. That would be great. Lowell, can you hear Ray? He would he asked you to pull up the plans so that they can be displayed on the TV screens within the meeting room. Ryan, why don't you get the board as well? If do you have a board? Thank you. So just so the audience understands, Lowell is the township engineer from Aero Engineering. So he is participating via the Zoom format and has just pulled up the land development plan. Thank you, Lowell. Thanks, Lowell. Thank you. So now Ryan has a Colored rendering, I guess, of the same plan. But what would you prefer to look at? Well, if, every, if the public can see the screen. Okay, there, sure. <coughs> at the bottom of the screen, on the bottom right hand side, that's the essentially where the where the Kmart property meets uh, meets up with the frontage of Joey's Pizza. And essentially, that's where the, you know, where the current plan proposes to start the sidewalk, and right where Lowell has his hand or pretty close to it, that's that offsite gap, right? You know, where there's a disconnection, and uh, we're working with the adjacent property owners to to make that connection as part of the land development. So we're picking up the Joey's Pizza existing sidewalks uh, along the Lincoln Highway frontage, carrying it along the entire length of the site's frontage on Lincoln Highway across the existing, uh, I guess the reconfigured driveway until it gets to the edge of the property that meets up with the Domino's Pizza where the sidewalk on Lincoln Highway has to stop. And then it will turn inward or north into the site to essentially wrap right around the Domino's Pizza property. And it'll run right out to where the Bailey Road sidewalk improvements are currently under construction now and they'll run the full length of Bailey Road all the way up to the site's, <clears throat> the end of the site's frontage, which is the beginning of the Rafini property. Mm -hmm. And that's, if you pan up, that's the location of the other gap that right. Kristen had outlined in her, in her uh, introduction. And that gap will be, uh, we'll, we'll make that connection as part of the land development improvements. And along Lincoln Highway, this will all be at street level. That's correct. Thank you. Just a question, Kristen Camp. Uh, was the uh, because I know we we talked about the um, the fee in lieu of uh, open space at the conditional use. Was the addition of the sidewalks not included in conditional use um, talks, or was that a later item? I can't remember if the conditional use addressed sidewalks. I, I don't think we did because it was part of your SALDA requirement. Okay. So they would need a waiver from you. The ordinary rule is they have to put the sidewalks in along the frontage. But be, uh, just because of the property or or the gaps too? No, no, there was no discussion about the gaps as the conditional use. That was okay. not required by conditional use. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm just uh, trying to figure out whether I, I'm usually opposed to waiving the open space fees, but if this isn't, if that would not have been a requirement and that's a trade-off, 
then maybe it's it's something worth talking about. Yeah, it was not that was not discussed. The the gap in the sidewalk was not discussed <clears throat> and was not required as a condition of the conditional use approval. Okay. So and maybe uh, Ryan, can you give an estimate of what the additional cost is for that added sidewalk? Was it as, as a comparison to what the fee in lieu of open space is? Carlton Smith, the number we got from the contractor was 15000 approximately for both the extensions. Uh, that was not part of the conditional use. That's why we asked for the in lieu of, which was just under 4000 That costs the probably approximately 15000 unless we run into any issues. And, uh, and uh, thank you. Thank you. And Kristen Camp, do you remember, <clears throat> did we? just take that out of the conditional use or was there a requirement for open space in the conditional use? I don't think we did. I don't know if we addressed it. Necessarily. Okay. Cause I remember at the last minute we, they had asked for a waiver. Maybe we just didn't include the waiver in the conditional use. Um, but maybe we should look at that because if they're conflicting, what happens if it says they have to pay it? Well, I would ask, I mean, whatever the board decides tonight, we'll ask, I mean, that will be. I, re I remember at the end of the, of the, to you hearing that there was a push to get a waiver of of um, open space fee and that we voted it down. Mm -hmm. We voted to. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, we agreed to pay the open space fee at the time, but there was no request at that time. There was no decision to extend it on property that we don't own. Yeah. If the township doesn't want the sidewalk extended, we could easily cut the check for $4,000. No, I'm just asking, does the conditional use speak to the open space? If it does, and it says in the conditional use, you must pay it, but the <laughs> land development says you're well, not the, paying it. The ordinance actually says it. The ordinance requires it. Right. And I think the township just said comply with the township ordinance. Okay. But we could not have asked for a waiver of it at that time because it was it's a, it's a subdivision land development requirement, okay. not a zoning requirement. I just wanted to make sure there's not conflicting. I think yes. we're I think we're good. Okay. Because I mean, we again we couldn't have asked for the way. This is the first time we could have asked for that waiver. Okay. And and Josh, just to cover our bases, what I will do is it, <clears throat> again, assuming the board is willing to vote on this, is we can add a sentence that says, notwithstanding anything stated in the conditional use order, the applicant shall adhere to this motion you know okay. if there's an inconsistency between the conditional use and this motion this motion controls something like that we could say okay if we if we had to do that i did have one question about the sidewalk uh, over by joey's i know the sidewalk comes up to a telephone pole or a light pole or something and wraps around yes. it is that the one you're you're presenting uh, to to connect with Yes. Yeah, so was there a question about the telephone pole, or the utility pole? Yes. It, would that be moved, and you would straighten that out, or are you just going to wrap the sidewalk around it? We'll wrap the sidewalk. Okay. Around it. I think that's easier. But <laughs> yeah. Okay. We, yes. That, that's the approach. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Commissioners, any other questions on this? I will ask uh, residents. There's any, yes, Mr. Mu come on, come on up here, uh, Mr. Mushrush, come to the microphone. Is that microphone on? It is. You, you do speak loud, but Thank just you. name name your right. uh, your name and address. Please. David Mushrush, 3600 Homestead Lane. Going up. Yeah. I just have a question about that subterranean retention basin, stormwater drainage basin. Where is that located there, and how's it wrapping around, and what's the capacity? Question? That be the old one that they're repairing, or the new one? The, the subterranean, the low surface. Mm -hmm. in, in the main parking lot. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to go right underneath <clears throat> the, the Lomax parking lot. Yeah, as you can see, the you know, right in front of the Lomax, uh, the main, I guess it's the old main entrance to the Kmart. There's a thick gray dashed line that goes left to right. Oh, right. Okay, I can get down there. Yeah. Let me see that. Yeah. So it's a it's a series of, of uh, perforated pipes that are inside of a storm bed. 
that's all wrapped in a, a fabric, and then you, the bottom of it going to the line. There is. Yeah, in, com in compliance with the town All right. Standard, standard answer there, David. <laughs> <laughs> questions from the Zoom world. Right, well, board, uh, I guess first question is the uh, the waiver. We'll uh, ask, I guess, a consensus on uh, how we feel about this waiver since they're extending the sidewalks uh, to meet up with the other properties. I'm typically not in favor of that, but I think the Public benefit outweighs the three thousand dollars. Tend to agree with you there, commissioners. I agree. Okay. We can uh, entertain a motion to uh, consider approval for the preliminary final subdivision and land development uh, with the uh, approved waiver for open space. I want to state something. Well, respect, and I, I like all you guys. You're all really good guys. Again, I just want to be on the record with this one last time. I have spoken to township planners, city planners, township commissioners, supervisors, attorneys. The key to the success of every township, borough, and city is a rail line. This township has a rail station, and it is within a stone's throw of this location and it just baffles me that the applicant didn't have the foresight to go out and get the funding and do the right thing with this spot that would made a lot of money for them and would have really improved this township because now we're stuck with a dead space yeah you'll get people coming in doing some business but it's a dead space that could have been the most thriving part of this township across from a rail station and that's all. It's no, no foresight, no planning. Just, oh, grab it, make some money. Sorry. Right. Thank you, Commissioner Evans. All right, I have a motion on the floor, or, or do I have a motion? Okay. Is that a yes? I make a motion. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Moved by Commissioner Young. Second by Commissioner Tendero. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Right, four to one passes. Thank you so much. All right. All right, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Really, everyone have a great, be safe out there. Have a wonderful holiday yeah, season. Yeah, be careful. Next on the agenda, we have Township Engineer. Hello, work up there. Hey, what it's all about. No, Lowell's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lehman, uh, Mr. Stackhouse, let me know that, that you filled your requirement for this evening. That's not how I put that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I love Mary Christmas. All right, next on the agenda, our township engineers. Yes, good evening, uh, commissioners. Good evening. Happy holidays. Uh, happy holidays to you. you as well. Good to see you again. Uh, Carl Schmidt with uh, Arrow and uh, Casey Lalonde well and there's eight items on the agenda uh, we thought we'd go over them um, I have a few to address and uh, and Casey's gonna do some as well uh, item number one on your agenda um, I'm gonna add item eight afterwards as well as the same project um, I'll pause then to uh, uh, wait to, for the motion or discussion so item one is a request for consideration of final payment application number three, the Brightfields Inc. in the amount of $25,460.41 <clears> <throat> uh, 
This is in relation to the demolition at 258 Horseshoe Drive. Uh, it's important to note that this bless is, you. God bless. Um, this is um, final payment for the project. The project has completed. Contractor fulfilled their contract. Uh, so this is the final payment for that demo project. So I'll pause for okay. um, any questions mm -hmm. or motion. Commissioners, any questions? Residents, any questions on this? None in the township building, any in Zoom world? Again, this is covered with a grant, right? Thank you. Entertain a motion to uh, make final payment to Brightfields Inc. in the amount of twenty-five thousand four hundred sixty and forty-one cents. So moved. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Kennedy. Second by Commissioner Tendero. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion's good. Five zero. Mm. And down. <laughs> good evening, everyone. We're just doing a little tag team tonight. Um, <laughs> Uh, the second item on the agenda is consideration to award the lowest responsible bid to Custer Excavating in the amount of $183,661, no cents, for the Park Drive Stormwater Conveyance System replacement project from bids opened on December 14th, 2022. The bids have been reviewed and vetted and forwarded to your township staff for review tonight and approval, possible approval. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, any and questions? Is that amount in the ballpark <clears throat> of what we were anticipating? Yes, yes, that was right around the, the estimate. Excellent. This is replacing three pipes that have uh, collapsed in Correct. that uh, development. Any other questions, commissioners? Questions from residents? None? Right. Entertain a motion uh, to approve uh, or award the uh, lowest responsible bid to cust. Custer? Custer Excavating. Custer right. Excavating. Uh, in the amount of 183661 even. So moved. So moved. Oh. Second. So moved by Commissioner Young, second by Commissioner Evans. <laughs> and, and a third by uh, Commissioner Tendero. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion's good. 5-0. Moving right along. Very good. And item number three on the agenda is the big one. We've all been waiting for. Mm -hmm. Yay. Uh, request for consideration to award the lowest responsible bidder to Lobar Site Development Corporation in the mm -hmm. amount of $879,779.32 for Municipal Drive Bridge. Um, for bids open on December 16th, 2022. Mm -hmm. these, bids, these bids came in uh, for us about half of what we expected, which is great, but we have vetted the, the the lowest responsible bid and contracted uh, contacted um, other uh, references and everything else. Everything is is right on target. So we're recommending approval tonight. Uh, if the board sees fit, we will uh, issue the notice to proceed letter on the 27th of December. And what Tuesday. what is their as do they have an estimated time mm -hmm. in the? This is going to be a, a precast structure, mm -hmm. so it's about 12 weeks once they receive that notice to proceed for, constru for construction of that uh, structure offsite at the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we have a very uh, delicate, as, as Ray and I have been going back for weeks on, there's a, there's a uh, sanitary sewer line that's right there. Mm -hmm. We're going to be about two feet away from that line with the footer for this bridge. Um, so the construction has to happen in very quick succession. Um, we can't do a bunch of demolition on it and then wait a few weeks for the bridge to come. Right. It's going to have to happen very quickly over a matter of days. Demolition, shoring up of the sewer line, and then placement of the bridge. So once we get that bridge structure uh, uh, completed, fabrication, um, then we're going to we will meet with the contractor and come up with a very, <coughs> very, very succinct time frame for activity uh, because of that sewer line. We have to protect that. And it's going to be very. You, quick. you don't want to mess with Scott's sewer line. No, yeah. no, 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 no. That was. That was <laughs> we've been going round and round on that for weeks. So, yeah. And just to be clear, this this price didn't include the design or uh, the inspections or permit fees or any of that stuff. Correct. You signed a separate uh, professional services agreement last fall to do the design bidding, um, and all the all the way through uh, construction management, construction observation, and project closeout. 
Okay. Commissioners, any other questions on this? So we're in a perfect world looking mid-April, right? Yes, and I'll, I, I, we've already contacted FEMA about an extension uh, for this and more. Um, and with your potential pr approval tonight, I'll be contacting Jonathan Skripka at FEMA. Um, I've already spoken to him on the phone. He said, you, you guys are making great progress, especially with, with possible bid award tonight. He'll grant us an extension uh, to get the project started without, without question. Good. All right, and this is for the Municipal Drive Bridge. So residents, uh, any questions? Any from the audience? Any from Zoom World? All right, this is exciting. Entertain a motion to uh, award the lowest responsible bid. Oh, I did have a question. Uh, you did have one lower bid. Yes. I, why are they kicked out? We did uh, through the vetting of the of all the bids. Yes. Uh, they were yes they were lower. 30 grand or so. Mm -hmm. However, their experience, um, they're, uh, they've built a lot of sidewalks. Mm -hmm. uh, we have no ex experience with them building bridges. Okay. Um, and also they're not PennDOT pre-qualified, <coughs> which is, it's a step they may, should have taken and they probably we will after not getting okay. this bid, um, okay. but we required it in the bid document. So. <laughs> locations of the bid correct correct okay okay yeah they're only about what 15 16 thousand lower so it wasn't a huge difference no it wasn't it wasn't large okay difference. i just wanted to clarify why all right perfect a entertain a motion uh, so moved there you go so <laughs> moved. It, it, was it? no it was josh second uh, I, I didn't hear josh I did say second. oh okay so uh, denise you got that Okay, you got all three of them. All in favor? Say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's good. 5 0. Looking forward to our new bridge. Yeah. We are too. Thank you so much. Woo. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Uh, and number four on the agenda is also um, another Culvert Bridge project, the More Road, uh, I'm sorry, More Drive, More Road Bridge project um, from bids opened on December 14th, 2022. Uh, we're recommending award to Construction Master Services LLC in the amount of five hundred sixty-seven thousand four hundred eighty-eight dollars seventy-six cents. Again, for the Moore Road Bridge replacement. When do you plan to start work on that? We can start. This is going to be a cast in place. So, winter conditions, they can pretty much work all winter uh, with additives to the concrete and proper construction management. Mm -hmm. We will issue the notice to proceed on next Tuesday <clears throat> after the holiday. Mm -hmm. So they could they could start as soon as we do the pre-construction meeting with township staff and our staff. Mm -hmm. So we will have this bridge done probably much sooner than municipal. Would this be yeah. done by about April, do you think? Or? Well, before, most likely. If, as long as we have, night, I shouldn't say nice weather, but normal winter weather, they okay. can work throughout the winter. So this will be right. much quicker. And once we have the pre-construction meeting, we'll be able to get a good grasp with the contractor about their schedule. Mm -hmm. And we'll convey that information to staff and to you. So you know exactly when this is all happening. Thank you very much. Casey, we are going to file extension. We are going to file extension, absolutely, just in case, in case we have a okay. 2011 12 winter like we had with seven feet of snow. Yeah, we're still going to file extension. Just in case. Safety first. Absolutely, of course. No other questions from commissioners? We're and we're in the ballpark of what was anticipated on this one? Yeah, uh, we actually estimate, our estimated about $1.2 million for this one. So oh, well. well below. Okay. Uh, and going back to municipal just for a second, the last estimate we did, I think, was um, September, September 9th or so. Yeah. Municipal was $2.2 .2 mm. Wow. That was our estimate. So wow. we're well below. Nice, and and nice these time. are just construction costs, though. I mean, in Correct. the overall project, of course, when you're adding yes. the other. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so, but we're still well below what we no, were well, estimating. Even with the design costs, we're way below our estimates, even okay. just for construction alone. So, perfect. All right. Uh, residents, any questions? No. Zoom world, nothing? Okay. Entertain a motion to uh, award to the lowest responsible bid. Uh, to construction masters in the amount of five hundred sixty-seven thousand four hundred eighty-eight and seventy-six cents for everyone keeps saying more road bridge. Is it more road or more drive? More this road just road. a typo. It's more road. More road. Okay, I just confirm. So moved. So moved. Second. second. Moved by Commissioner uh, Evans. Second by Commissioner uh, Kennedy. 
And a quick third by Commissioner Tindera. All in favor, say aye. 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 Right, motion's good, 5-0. Moving on to number six. Uh, five, we're going to item five. Uh, this should I be- I mark that off too quick? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is um, an item in regards to your consideration to award a mm -hmm. bid for the lowest responsible bidder for a uh, pump house demolition project. The, the bids were open December 20th. We received four bids. Uh, the lowest uh, responsible is Brightfields. That's our recommendation. Brightfields did the horseshoe uh, property demo as well. Mm -hmm. um, so they were again, low bidder in this capacity. Um, I would pause there to answer any questions or for your consideration of a motion. Commissioners, any questions? Your wheelhouse. <laughs> big off. I know no questions from us. Uh, residents, any questions? Chris, any questions? You good to go? All right. And, and just so the board knows, this is being paid for through an insurance settlement from our board. Okay. Nice. Uh, and then I will entertain the uh, motion to award to the lowest uh, responsible bid for the pump house demolition project. Second. The move, moved by Commissioner uh, Kennedy, second by Commissioner Tindero. All in favor, say aye. 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 It's good, five zero. Very good. This is where I wanted to jump to item eight. It's okay. uh, in relation to the same project. Uh, this is a request for your consideration to approve an addendum for Aero Consulting Services to the previously approved PSA 1222 PW10. This request is for $11,041 and no cents. Uh, for services specific to administration and construction observation for that uh, pump house demolition project. Okay, and this is still covered under the insurance for the uh, the flood damage? That's correct. Okay. Yes. All right, any questions on this, commissioners? Any mm -hmm. okay, questions from residents? Nope. Entertain a motion uh, to approve uh, the Arrows Consulting uh, PSA 1222-PW10 in the amount of $11,041. Did just have a resident raise their hand. Yes. Mr. Parr? Yes, Tom. It's not yeah, for I, uh, Lloyd. <laughs> yeah, Tom Parr, 582 Lloyd Avenue. Um, uh, uh, how much is the bid? I, I should have asked this when you did number five. What is the, the cost on the... Uh, on the pump house. It doesn't say in the agenda. Correct. It's the low bid was $57,600 even. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you very much. Happy holidays, Mr. Parr. You and <laughs> thank Chris. You, Tom. Same to you. Thank you. All right. Entertain a motion. I have a motion? Yeah, I had a motion yeah. and a yes. second. All right, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Good, five zero. Going back up to six. Yes. Uh, my last one, this is uh, item six on the agenda. Request for your consideration uh, to uh, have a pay application request made uh, for Lycoming uh, Supply. Uh, this is for the project uh, East Fisherville Bridge Demo Project. The request is in the amount of $62,783.82. Uh, this is for the demo project. The work is done. Um, this is, um, their, um, they have one more payment request uh, for uh, some remaining items at the end. Um, that next pay request is around 9,000. This one is specific uh, for the work. Again, it's done. Everything was uh, done in accordance with the plans and specs. Okay, the remainder 9,000, is that just a re retainer? Yes. At the end? Okay. <clears throat> Commissioners, any questions on this one? Mm. Okay, if not, entertain a motion to uh, approve. So moved. Moved. Second. Okay, moved, by, moved by Commissioner Tendero, second by Commissioner Young. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay, motion's good, 5-0. 
and I'm very interested in the next one. Absolutely. Uh, Township staff and I have been talking about this for a couple of months. Um, we created a, a, a PSA, Professional Service Agreement, to uh, create a stormwater improvements plan for the township. Uh, yes. I, obviously, stormwater has been an Thank issue you. here. Um, mm -hmm. So we presented uh, PSA 1222PW07 in the amount of $25,500 to establish a stormwater capital improvements plan, effective and strategic use of funding to improve Cowan Township's existing stormwater infrastructure. So we will use your existing mapping that we've already completed uh, and come up with a prioritized plan. Uh, we're looking at a 10-year plan. You can use that for budgeting on a yearly basis to start prioritizing stormwater projects. We'll work very closely with Township staff, your Public Works Department, and our GIS uh, staff um, to create uh, a model document that you will then adopt as your strategic plan for stormwater for the next 10 years. So, uh, basically, you'll be able to identify the worst case scenarios we have in our township. Yes, so we'll do uh, on those. It's cost estimates and everything for uh, identified projects. Um, so you'll be able to see that and use it again as a very as a strategic plan, mm -hmm. um, strategic 10 year plan. Uh, we will update the cost every year, uh, given inflation and everything else, mm -hmm. and present that back to the uh, commissioners uh, on a yearly basis. Okay. And how long would this take? Uh, we should be able to get this done very quickly. Um, we are probably going to start meeting mid-January, and we will probably have a final draft back to staff and to you within a few months, maybe two months at the most. So we'll, we'll work on okay. it very quickly. Okay, good. This is very exciting. It is. This is really... Mm -hmm. And I, I do want to thank Ray and his Public Works guys. I know they've been going at it this year, trying Absolutely. to clean out some of these pipes. Yeah. Uh, some of the... the the sediment that has just built up throughout the years. And I know they were just attacking what they could anyway, but this is excellent to have a plan uh, and we can act on it. So thank you. Absolutely. Yes. All right. I will entertain a motion to approve this. So moved. Second. Moved and second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion's good, 5 0. I did forget to ask residents if they had questions about it. But uh, any questions? I know everyone's kind of looking forward to have the stormwater mm -hmm. issues uh, taken care of throughout our township. Nothing in Zoom world? <clears throat> Just one clarification. This is township owned, not privately owned. Correct. Right. Yes. yes. Just so that's clear to everybody. This is municipally owned. Mr. President, you did have somebody raise their hand. Yes. Hello, everybody. How are you doing, Mark? Mark. Good. Mark B. Young, 20 Beaver Run Road. It doesn't have to do with one part of that. It has to do with the overall um, plans. It looks like we're moving well ahead with all the projects, which is great. Um, so I just have a couple of part questions. Um, have we submitted the FEMA or FEMA at the same time um, for reimbursement of the projects completed? And if so, if we've gotten projects or getting payment from FEMA or FEMA. Um, where has that money gone? And if not, why haven't we submitted and why hasn't it been paid? It's kind of a weird question, but. I, yeah, I think Mark's just asking if we've been able to submit anything to FEMA and we, had we have reimbursement. Just, we have just had the pro projects that have been cleared out. We have just submitted in, in, in the last two weeks, our finance department just submitted and we are waiting to hear back. Okay. It sounds like the extensions we're going to be okay with that we didn't think we were going to be okay with in the beginning. I believe so. Right. Look, it looks that way because we made such great progress on it because we had the funds available. To okay. I know that was a big concern. So getting that money back and then the question goes forward. We can do this later in time, but you know, where does that money go? Does it go right back to paying the bonds, which I think residents be in favor of. So. Yep. All right. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. All right. I think that did it for you guys, right? All right. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. much. Happy thank holidays, you. Ray. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Okay, very good. Enjoy. Thanks again. Both of you. Always bringing good news to us. Come on over, guys.
Oh, one for each of them. Oh, <laughs> there you go. One for each of them. <laughs> hey, Dave. <laughs> Thank you so much for everything. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Take care. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Right. Next on the agenda, township manager. Miss Denny, what do we have? Um, a headache. That, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> that, that, um, <laughs> this would be considered the portion of the hearing for anyone, or excuse me, the portion of the meeting for anyone that would wish to make any public comment on the 2023 budget or the ordinances that go along with that. Uh, the budget has been put out for display um, it has been on display for more than 20 days. Um, it has been advertised. We have copies here at the township building and also on the website. So at this time, anybody that wishes to make any comments or questions about the budget <coughs> or the ordinances. Any commissioners, any comments? I know uh, Commissioner Young had pointed out earlier that they, we do not, uh, we are not increasing any taxes. Right. And we are keeping services as are. Yes. So services are status quo and we are not increasing taxes. Status quo went up a little bit, but that's not, that's just happening everywhere with everything. We're good. Well, and then I will reach out to residents. Any re uh, questions from residents? In the Zoom world? Mr. DeYoung? Yes, Mark. I'm sorry, I wasn't I muted. Um, with inflation going forward at the rate it's going forward, hopefully it's going down. Um, do we think we have plans to be able to keep this for a while without increasing the taxes? I mean, that's kind of walking a tightrope there. I, I missed some of that. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Are we yeah. keeping Well, it? yeah, but taxes are where they are now, but inflation <laughs> overall is at 7.1%. It is going down, but it may be tough in the future to keep that going with inflation the way it is. Would you like us to raise taxes? <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. this is kind of like if you had asked us in in at the beginning of uh, 2021 if we anticipated. I mean, I appreciate what you're saying, but if you with that tax, if you had said, "Do you anticipate raising taxes next year?" and the answer would have been no, but then Hurricane Ida hit. So, I mean, I, I believe that we're okay for now and uh, hopefully inflation will continue to come down and we'll start getting some better revenue in here with some better businesses and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, that's a good answer. I know it's an outside question, but mm -hmm. I'm always interested in the economy and things like that at the same time. So thank you. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Mark. Uh, with the inflation uh, coming next year, it's just gonna be rough for a lot of folks. So okay. I'm, I'm glad that we weren't able to or didn't need to increase taxes. Yeah. And it was good. Our uh, senior citizens got a uh, nice raise of, I think it's 8.7% or so. They did. Yes, yeah. yes, we did. And I would just say that uh, Paul and I, when we go through, we literally go line by line through every dollar spent. Um, so, and we make staff justify every dollar that, that uh, is in that budget. So, um, I would say our goal is to always be at uh, no need for an increase. Um, so that, you know, every year we try to go into it, looking at it that way um, and um, making sure that we're, we're getting the best bang for our buck. Great. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mark. And was there a second hand? Mr. Fox. Yes, Mark. Mark, long time. How are you time. this evening? Hi, Mark Fox. How you guys doing? Good. Excuse me. 256 Thorn Ridge Drive. Perfect. Thank you. I have a question. So last year we, we had a significant increase and a lot of that money was earmarked for the infrastructure. And, um, and a lot of that I assume is payable in 2023, right? So, and I know there's been a lot of costs incurred. I'm not trying to uh, nickel and dime anything here. So isn't there some money left over from <clears throat> what was raised last year that did not go to these infrastructure projects because it's not going to be paid until 2023 and now we're collecting again 
for that same increase uh, that was due to the infrastructure costs. Mark, that that uh, bond payment started this year, so that that we did uh, start incurring in 2022, uh, and that payment <clears throat> will continue um, for the next. Is it 29 years? Was it a 30 year bond, or was it a what was it? it was, I believe it's a 30 year bond. So that payment will be a uh, incurred um, debt for that period of time. The debt fund that is the old <clears throat> bond, uh, and that fund. Uh, uh, unless uh, other people sitting here make the decision that will run out in 20, uh, I believe it's 2030, um, 2030 or 2032, something like that. Um, so that debt fund would go away at that period uh, unless uh, the board at the time makes a decision to change that. Um, we did have some uh, staff vacancies that led to um, some uh, unused funds from this year, but that will be eaten up by uh, raises in the next year in the police contract and um, filling our our vacant staff in the police uh, department itself. And so, other departments. And, and other yeah. departments uh, from vacancies. And it, I, the police and, and road crew have just been incredibly, as well as codes, has been incredibly hard to find people and retain them. So um, there was some excess there, but that will quickly be eaten up by contractual raises. Uh, does that answer the question, Mark? Do you have some other questions? I'm not really sure because I thought that a portion of the the tax increase was to cover us until we got the money back from FEMA. Just That's a portion in, of that that increase. The bond was taken in full in 2022. So that payment started in 2022. Um, that was around three, I don't have it right at the tip of my finger, but around $330,000 for that payment. Um, and that, that started <clears> in 2022. I, I think Mark's trying to hint that. Are, was, are you assuming FEMA is going to recoup the eight million dollar loan that we took? Yeah, I thought the number was four million, but it, but um, yeah, it was eight point one million that we borrowed. Yeah, uh, but but no, FEMA is only going to you know cents on a dollar as far as reimbursement. Um, yet to be determined. Yeah, yet to be determined. We've zero. Yeah, we've received zero from FEMA at this yeah, point. So, Mr. Oh, okay. Also, right. The way that yeah. FEMA works, you have to complete project yeah i know i remember and, yeah and you then submit and they let you know how much they are willing to reimburse you for. yeah so so we don't know what that number is so that that it is a fema does <coughs> definitely put the cart before the horse and say build the cart and we'll tell you if we'll give you the horse or not and that that's where we're at mm -hmm. and, okay well i'm sure everybody will look forward to having the projects done so uh that, that's the <clears throat> that's the goal so all right thanks a lot Thanks, Thanks for holding so the line. Thanks Mark, for holding really the line. It. Happy holidays. Yeah, same to you guys. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I saw another hand raised. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, Mark. Just that I may be speaking out of turn. But I apologize for that. I think what Mark was hitting at is when that money comes in for FEMA, is it going to pay the principal of the bond? That's that's the overall, you know, we borrowed the money from FEMA or we borrowed the money from the taxpayers to do the projects and once FEMA and FEMA reimburse us is that money going to take down that bond or are we just going to do the regular bond payment for 10 years which makes no sense I don't think we'll know until we know if we're getting anything back how much it's going to be uh, I think we had left open a couple of possibilities uh, last year when we went through all of this at length um, you know some of our a couple of our bridges the Municipal Bridge already had damage from the hurricane that it hit in June 1st, I think, of, of that year. And it wasn't enough to close the bridge or make it need repairs at that point, but it was enough for FEMA to say, well, I was already damaged. That's not our, our responsibility. So there, there's a lot of variables hanging. Hopefully we'll get some money back and hopefully it can go towards paying that. I know that you want to see you know, make sure we have money for golf carts and make sure that we have money for things like that. So yeah. let's see what happens separate. and uh, let's, let's keep our fingers <clears throat> crossed and keep keep moving forward. The, mon the money for golf carts was an investment in a, a vehicle. So to make that exactly. golf course run better and be profitable. I understand, Mark. I was being facetious. <laughs> yeah. I know. 
the same time, I mean, I think it's really important. If you borrow money to update your kitchen, like we're doing from FEMA, we're updating our bridges, then that money should go right back to paying down the debt. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yes. Great. And, and once that money comes in, we'll, we'll determine that. Any other questions there, Mark? Okay. It's just a presentation, the second uh, line. The now. second one, um, the board had asked me when Mike Fuller had come uh, representing DDRPC regarding the LED retrofit program. Um, we have some unique situations on Lincoln Highway with the lighting. There's lighting we own and we pay the bill on, and then there's lighting we don't own, but we do the maintenance on. Um, I was asked by the board to see what the cost would be to retrofit the ones that we also do the maintenance on. And the cost of that change order would be $10,300. So if the board is so interested, we can approve that this evening and also then approve resolution 2022-33 that we have had tabled um, to award this and move forward with the project. Commissioners, any questions on this? Yeah, I'd like to see everything done in the retro of the mm -hmm. keep in mind okay. we're yeah. not doing the ones we don't right uh, like mr mullen and i were speaking about yeah. that earlier right yeah. there, there's parts of the street that that, that are privately owned yes so we're not doing those it's just the ones we maintain and if i understand it's from bondsville over to municipal drive pretty much okay yeah, yeah. and there's some scattered ones Okay, and then the information uh, about the lighting, the LED lighting, so you can pass along to the shopping center to see if they would want to Absolutely. upgrade theirs, just to have that continual look. Yeah. All right, but uh, um, thank you. Nice. Thank you for adding the extra. I just, I just would mm -hmm. like to see that, you know, all the same you yep. right, down the, yep. right down the street, so as far as we can. And someday we'll get some... Uh, Christmas uh, decorations on those poles. You know I'm going to push for it. You know it. I've been pushing it in the for it for years. <laughs> so, all right. Try to get a bow. So, uh, well, any other questions on this, commissioners? If not, yeah. uh, residents. None, None at this time. time. All right. Yeah. Uh, entertain a motion to approve uh, the streetscape retrofit change order in the amount of ten thousand three hundred sixty-nine dollars. So moved. Second. You know Josh was on top of that yeah. one. Oh, yeah. Lincoln Highway. Lincoln all, right. Highway. So all in favor? Say aye. 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 All right. Good to go. Uh, time frame. Um, we were ordering the parts two weeks ago. Okay. As soon as they come in. You said number six? Number three. three. Under, oh. Yes. Oh, okay. Is, I yes. circle number six. Okay. Um, so consideration for the adoption of ordinance 2022-10, adopting the lighting assessment for the Township Light District. No. 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 Actually, I'm sorry. We're, we're on two different, under uh, back under number three under the, the agenda. All the way up. Up, up, up. Under yeah. Up, up, up. Yeah. One, yeah. There you go. Right there. Yeah. Uh, Kristen was saying we can untable number six. When okay, we get yeah. There. Yeah, when we get there. And then when she said three, I'm okay, yeah. lighting. She's on okay. three of herself. Okay. Um, but six, we can untable when we get there. Okay. All right, let's go back to three. Go ahead. Okay. Um, we finally have received the final parts um, from Haversburg Systems for the dim room that you've been very patient for. Um, request for consideration by the board to approve invoice 0054405. Habitsburg Systems in the amount of $30,240.52 for conference room upgrades and microphones. So you finally want to get paid. Yes. This also was paid for from ARPA funds. It is not general fund tax dollars. I have one question. They only came up with three handhelds? That's all we ordered. Oh. I mean, how yeah. many... Really need. Well, 
you know, I over, I'm overkill, but if I were doing, I would have ordered two for there and two for here at minimum, just to make sure that people aren't sharing microphones, but. Um, headsets. It's, it's, it, 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 it's fine. That's all we ordered. Yeah, I, I wish I had been in on that conversation because I would have tried to, to get some more, so. I think it was per table. Well, it also cost. Yeah. 100, 200, 300, all they should cost. These are PVs, I think, are they? Or, uh, I mean, uh, or SM. Now, the important part is you guys have individual microphones. Yes, yes, from yes, this yes. Table, from these tables, no more than one person speaks yeah. at a time anyway. So it, <clears throat> Good enough for now. Fine. All right. Well, she already read it, so I'll entertain a motion for this. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Moved by Commissioner Young, second by Commissioner Tendero. All in favor, say aye. 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 Which is good, 5 0. We do have a hand raised. Yes, Mark. Yeah, uh, 256 Dwayne Ridge. I have a question. Uh, as somebody who may not be at every meeting, I've uh, and I haven't been lately, so I apologize for that. But um, is this an additional to the, what we've already spent? Because Frankly, I find often from as a spectator, the audio um, is very difficult uh, to to hear, especially like if I'm attending uh, an, another meeting, like not not necessarily the commissioners, but like one of the other meetings. Um, I forget which one, but Ray's there also, and I'm, I'm, te I'm texting them. I'm texting them, telling them that I can't. Are they at planning? Yeah, it's terrible. So I was curious if this is extra money or this was part of what was already budgeted and what can they do to improve the quality? Well, this was already budgeted. This was a part of our ARPA funds. Right. It, it may be user error. It's definitely an additional on our part because we've gone through the process of getting a like, I'm not, like, 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 we right don't now, have a microphone, yeah, right? I don't now, know, so. Mark, if you can't hear Ray. Yeah. <laughs> He's speaking right now. That, that's what it yeah. is. It's yeah. more of an educational part of the audience. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. When did we get the new mics? Two weeks ago. Okay, so this is maybe this is kind of new as far as these mics. Yeah. Uh, how's tonight's meeting, Mark? Well, ironically, I couldn't hear Ms. Denny when she was when she was reading the ordinance about paying the money for the for the thing. Okay. Yeah, and I couldn't hear you in the speakers very well either. I think you have to do what we call eat the mic. Very well. Get a little closer. Raise loud enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I appreciate the feedback there, yes. Mark. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. On to the ordinance and resolutions. Uh, the first one for consideration is the adoption of ordinance 2022-08, setting the real estate tax rate for 2023 at 4.088 mills, which is uh, showing no increase from last year's. So moved. Second. And moved by Commissioner Evans, second by Commissioner Kennedy. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? is good five zero and uh, forgot to ask for uh, comments but uh, i will do that on the next one request for consideration to adopt ordinance 2022-09 imposing an annual fire protection tax of 0.6 mil which shows no increase from last year no increase or for the last six years might i add mm. all right uh, so, moved. so moved and second second uh, all right, any questions? Any questions from residents on the last two items? All right, all in favor? Say aye. 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 All right, motion's good, 5-0. That was motion by Commissioner Young, second by Commissioner Tendero. Uh, request for consideration, the adoption of ordinance 2022-10, adopting the lighting assessments for the Township Light District. Uh, question on that, just uh, I believe that uh, once we have the <clears throat> LEDs in, we will be looking at that again, how it affects some people. Yeah, so that's going to take probably all of next year mm -hmm. to, to, um, and just remember, there's a payback in that, you know, right. they're, they're seeing some of the, the companies helping us with some of the, the, um, 
uh, they get a, they get part of the savings. So it's going to take a few years for that to work through, uh, but we will uh, be revisiting that to figure out where the um, uh, where the costs actually are. So we'll we will see a savings, but it's going to be a couple of years before we actually realize the full savings because yeah. there is a, a time period. Was it a five year? Five year payback. Pay yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Until I, we break even. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. great. But, uh, I think I didn't phrase my question right. I, I recall um, the neighborhood. Uh, I think it was Tom Parr asking yeah. about this, about his specifics in that neighborhood. Yeah. So we we are going to work on that, but um, the because each neighborhood has its own um, fee structure, mm -hmm. um, and when we when we raise fees, which we haven't done um, in a long time, mm -hmm. that uh, that fee just gets raised for everybody equally okay. um, and not based on the actual usage. So once we get um, the LEDs and the, the payback, we will know exactly what it's costing us for, and we can we can probably equitably distribute that cost. Excellent, thank you. Mr. Parr has his hand up. What do you want? <laughs> yes, Tom. <laughs> thank you for not forgetting about me and my Lake District, Josh. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> The uh, I, I figured it was going to be a time thing. I, I knew it wasn't going to, to change overnight. I, I do have a question, and, and you can write this down, and you can tell me in a month or so. The light at Geo Carlson and Lloyd Avenue, uh, is that in the light district? That might be one that the township just pays. I, I don't know. We would have to look at that. Okay. All right. I mean, cause that honest to God, my neighbor pays more than anybody in our neighborhood because unfortunately he has front yardage and side yardage. Um, and it, it, it's just something that I, I've been asking. Um, uh, I was going to ask about last time when the light district or the lights came up, but it's not a big deal. No, no biggie. And again, thank you for remembering about us and our colonial lights. You know, Tom, uh, we, we could hold you hostage to give you an answer on this until you turn on your camera and show us your Santa Claus hat like you had on last night. I I don't have it. It's in my car. It's uh, in the car for the grandkids tomorrow, dressing up as Santa. But, Tom, one, one thing that e even if we can't adjust those rates right away, the the improved lighting will be, you know, dramatic. So, um and the quality of the light. So that a little comfort to that. Oh yeah. Oh no, no, no. I'm, I'm, i you convinced me when this first came up, uh, that this is, this is plus, plus, plus. I mean, these, these lights are, they, uh, let's see, I've been here since 83. I think they came in at like 84, give or take. Uh, so, uh, any, any improvement with these things that are here is, is a definite plus for everybody in the neighborhood. So, um, yeah, I can't wait. Uh, it, it, it's, it'll be a good deal. Happy holidays, sir. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Same to you. Same to everybody. All right. <laughs> so moved. Second. Doing the lights. Okay. Move, <laughs> second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All right. Thought we already had a motion, but. You might have. All right. We'll go with that one. <laughs> <coughs> All right. <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. All right. Next, we have a request for consideration to adopt the ordinance 2022-11, establishing the uh, an annual tax sufficient to pay interest in principal on any indebtedness of the township in the amount of 0.44 mills. So moved. Second. Moved and second. Uh, any questions? Any questions from residents on this one? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion by Commissioner Young, second by Commissioner Evans. Next, uh, request for consideration the adoption of uh, Ordinance 2022 12, the final 2023 municipal budget. A big one. So moved. Second. Moved and second. Any questions? Any questions from residents? All in favor? Say aye. 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 Once again, motion by Commissioner Young, second by Commissioner Evans. I think there for a second. All right. <laughs> Don't do too much of that. Right, we have a tabled uh, 
Resolution, entertain a motion to untable. So moved. Second. Moved and second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All right. Uh, request for consideration, the adoption of resolution 2022-33, authorizing the township president and secretary, secretary to sign all documents necessary to complete a contract for installation services with the Armour and Sons Electric for the LED services in collaboration with the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission LED light upgrade program. That was a mouthful. So, so moved. second. You moved and second. Any other questions? All in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion's good, 5-0. Uh, number seven, request for consider consideration of the resolution 2022-36, authorizing the amendment of the 2023 non-uniform uh, MMO, minimum municipal obligation. Any questions on this? No, I have a question. <laughs> uh oh, Josh. We have a question. What What was the change in this? It was, min I believe it was like $171. Up or down? Up. Okay. That's it. Okay. All right. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner uh, Kennedy. Second by Commissioner Evans. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion's good. Five zero. Good morning. All right. That was it. No, there's more. There's more. There's more. Minutes. Minutes. Oh, approval. Minutes. Uh, now we have minutes. Okay. Uh, request. Consider approval for the November 17th Board of Commissioner minutes. Any changes, uh, additions? Yes. <clears throat> On November 17th, the call to order says Commissioner Evans called the board and uh, also about pledge allegiance to the flag. I think he was on vacation. I was. Yeah, yeah, Commissioner Paul Evans was on vacation, so you have to put Jane Kennedy as vice president. Oh, I saw that. Commissioner, oh, oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, sure. the first line. Yeah, call to order, Commissioner Fine. Mullen, who right. was that sitting was in the Caribbean Jane. Sea at the time, <laughs> uh -huh. called the meeting to order. Say, pledge I, I, I was <laughs> pledging something down there. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But anyway, that's the only thing I could find. Everything else is good. Good catch. Good catch. I, I skipped down. I didn't even read that. Thanks. And so, Denise, you have that? But I was thinking about everyone. <laughs> sure. Uh -huh. Schooner bar. Sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any, any other uh, changes needed for November 17th? I would uh, abstain myself because I was not here. Entertain a motion. So moved. So moved. Okay. Moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four and one abstain. And that was Commissioner Evans and second by Commissioner Kennedy. And, uh, November 30th, Board of Commissioner Minutes. Any questions on those? I had uh, that there was um, a word typo that I, I, I sent. Denise already fixed it. So. Okay. So moved. <clears throat> second. So moved and second. I'm just seeing if I scribbled anything. Nope. All right, no other questions. Uh, moved and second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 And minutes have been approved. Moved by Commissioner Young. Second by Commissioner uh, Evans. And last but not least, uh, acknowledging the uh, receipt of the October 18th approved Planning Commission minutes. So moved. Moved. Moved by Commissioner Tendero, second by Commissioner uh, Kennedy. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion's good, 5 0. Finance Department, Ms. Swan, what do we have? Good checks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Microphone, Lisa. Your microphone. Oh, yeah, microphone. microphone. <clears throat> I anticipate um, another good finish uh, this year. The um, I know I've said it before, but I, I can't thank the directors enough for scrutinizing every penny um, before it got to me. So um, that makes my job a little bit easier. Um, as I've said before, it, it's not just a fourth quarter 
um, task. It's, uh, you know, myself and my staff look at the budget um, on a daily basis, just via paperwork that comes through the office, receipts that come in, et cetera. Um, work closely with, with um, Township Manager Denny, who also, you know, puts her signature on uh, a multitude of expenses um, that are necessary. So I want to I want to thank her too for cooperation. Um, I think we're going to end up with a, a nice, healthy fund balance again. Um, golf course has been coming into uh, its own, which is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, CTMA also um, is pulling their own weight, so it, it's nice to see well-rounded all the way um, throughout the entire township. Um, proud to be here, so thank you again for uh, letting me come back every day. <laughs> That is uh, that is all I have. You better keep coming back. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Lisa. Great job. Any questions or? I have one question on. Uh, the, it says on line item, code enforcement revenues. See note, but I don't see a note. But where? Um, I'm on the revenue summary, year to date. It says, and uh, on the code enforcement fees line. Oh, so our budget for that, we, we had something come in. It's, it's, it should even itself out okay. next month. Um, I, something came in, it was entered incorrectly when we caught it. We had to reverse it, but I can't process it until December. So you'll see the okay. correction mm -hmm. in December. All right. And then it looks like uh, moving some investments to play get really paid off. So uh, good work there. That's all. And of course, I just got to give a shout out to the golf course uh, here listed at the end of November. You're at 69,000 in the black. But as I spoke to Lisa a little while ago, what are we closer to 72 now? Excellent. Uh, once we post tomorrow uh, on Tuesday, we'll be at 75. So oh, yeah. don't spend anything. Yeah. <laughs> I said 75. I'm sticking with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you an update That's on, on yeah. 1230. And uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll we'll still be there. All right. Well, that's that's good news. Thank you. Yes. Okay. No, not this uh, weekend. Yeah. <laughs> you never Simulated. know. <clears throat> maybe, maybe people buy, <clears throat> buy rounds for Christmas gifts. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we have a uh, check run. 49,222 to 49,402 with also a manual check run at 284 to 285 and 2853. You got a four digit? Is it? Yep. Is it? Yeah, Dad, I was kind of typing a little too fast in that other manual check run. I actually typed it in the wrong number. Yeah. Um, so I went to the low. So oh, really? <laughs> oh. Uh, All right. That's it. You went. <laughs> no. Couldn't delete it and just redo it. No. Hey, hey. I, to me, I, I like it all sequential. <laughs> that one item is going to stick out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The payroll service. Oh, ADP. How's, how's ADP? Service going. <laughs> Yeah. You'll get a better idea. Get a better feel. All right. Do you still think it'll all come out in one W two for the employees? Okay. Okay. Everything was updated. I have to sign Hmm. All right, be nice. Yeah. Thank Very you. good. Thank Is, you. Are you aware of the 0 .07 employee withholding that's coming up? Yeah, I know. Uh -huh. I know. <laughs> I saw that. And I'm like, wow. Okay. It's been a while. I mean, that, as long as I've been in business, I don't ever remember it going up. So, uh, I did need to just recuse myself of one check because uh, it was to myself for the municipal authority. Uh, check number 49384. 
Anyone else? Any other comments? No. Entertain a motion to approve a check run. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Tendero, second by Commissioner Kennedy. All in favor? Say aye. 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 I was happy that my uh, uh, unemployment uh, number went down. You know, the rate. Yeah. So the employees get it, but uh, it saved me a couple bucks. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, next, civil service list candidates. Woohoo! Hey. All right. On uh, November 30th, the Board of Commissioners extended conditional offers of employment to five. Uh, police uh, applicants on the current civil service eligibility list. Four of the five accepted the conditional offers and one declined, leaving one remaining vacancy to be filled. Uh, in accordance with the civil service rules, the commission met publicly on December 12th uh, to certify three names to fill the remaining vacancies. From the three names certified, the Board of Commissioners will consider extending a conditional offer of employment to Renin McBell to begin police academy training in January 2023 uh, pursuant to a cadet sponsorship agreement with the township. Uh, the township will be paid tuition and salary uh, while the applicant is in training and will be reimbursed 75% of the training costs and 45% of the applicant's salary by the state upon graduation. Uh, so I will entertain a motion to consider a uh, Conditional offer of employment to Renine McBell. So moved. Second. And to approve her cadet sponsorship agreement. Yeah. Moved by Commissioner Evans, second by Commissioner Tendero. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Right. Motion's good, 5 0. Good luck, Chief. <coughs> yes. All right, next we have a handicapped parking sign located at 3717 Bungalow Glade. Miss uh, Denny, want to highlight us? I'm going to hand this off to the chief and Mr. Stackhouse. Uh, they had a request, and Mr. Stackhouse is handing it off to the chief. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah. It's We had this conversation earlier. It's on the street, sir, so that would be your problem. In all fairness, we went there. So the uh, resident approached the township. The resident um, possesses a handicapped placard. We mm -hmm. verified that uh, and requested the township to accommodate her by uh, locating an area along the curb and uh, posting it as handicapped so that she could park her vehicle uh, in front of the home. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Stackhouse and I conducted a site visit uh, where we could uh, adequately accommodate her and make proper placement of a handicap sign. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a township street. There are no prohibitions on the street uh, as far as uh, parking restrictions. Uh, so it's up to the board to uh, consider and grant <coughs> a, a handicap parking space for the woman and then I will hand it back off <laughs> to uh, <laughs> Director Stackhouse and Public Works to, um, mm. I guess you would have to do a PA1 call uh, yeah. and place a sign. No, we've never done an ordinance in the past. Uh, it does, but not, we never have for individual, for, for individual space. There's no parking, uh, there's no, no parking on that street whatsoever. There's no designated parking space on that street whatsoever. Just for, how would you word it for just one so parking space? Well, I mean, I would, owe, I, in this particular case, I mean, I would also, and I mean, I would defer to the chief. I would not be opposed to checking on that and bringing it back to another meeting first. Nor would I. 
then why don't we just table this and discuss it after the solicitor has time to review. I would rather well, I, I, I would say mm -hmm. there's no reason why the legislature couldn't have their own Well, then I, I would rather establish a proceed a, a more formal procedure than yes, like an application. Yeah, and it'll, stop, it'll slow people have, down. Have, from have we done this before? <laughs> we township. I I believe we have. Okay. I don't I don't remember. It's been a while, but I believe we have done. I, this. I, I like the guidance of our uh, solicitor. Okay. So, so we need an or we need an ordinance then to, to make this so. work. Yes. While we're doing this, we should probably put together a formal application too. Yeah, I can you give go. you examples. <laughs> Is this yeah. person a senior? Well, and also keep in mind, it will not be her spot. Any person with a the handicap, handicap placard spot. can okay. spot park in that spot. It's, yeah. it's not for that in the street. Right. Is, Is, it, street. Is it Is it in front of her house? Or is it? It's yes, but any person, okay. but anybody, could anybody could park there. This handicap. Yes. She doesn't own the street. Okay. <clears throat> uh, that's a really hard question that we may have to discuss in a staff meeting. Being it's on the street, but you actually, put up the actually, sign. Actually, we're just trying to keep the conversation about how we want to do that. I just. I, I, I want to make sure we do this right and, and dot the I's, cross the T's. Uh, I also want to make sure we're not stretching this out too long for someone who is in need. No, we can, somebody who, we can do this within two weeks. Great. Yeah, okay. and, uh, uh, we, we meet three weeks from now. So we'll have answers for you in January. Yep. Okay. And also, um, would there be a, uh, I, I, that, it's funny, funny, but. We have a, a friend in uh, the borough whose next door neighbor had a handicapped spot in front of their house and passed away. And the new resident was using the handicapped spot as guest parking for their friends. So our friend had to petition to, have it to get it removed. Right. Can we have some clause in our ordinance that says if you move or no, you know, for some reason that it's it comes out part of that application process? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. And uh, do we need an application? Do we really need an application? So we can streamline that a little so we don't have to have an application. I mean, I think in the borough, they just do a letter. They have they have letters of people asking for it, and then they attach that to your Perfect. agenda. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's do the letter. Let's, let's do the letter. I serve at the will of the board and the uh, manager. Uh, the chief uh, loves uh, the letter. <laughs> to the law. There was a, a um, exchange regarding applications. Yeah. I like applications. For the lack thereof. Yeah. I think applications are good, especially if we have to trace them, put them in a work order system, and then. The letter could go with the work order. Yes. I'm sick of you two ganging up on me. I've had it. Make it the three of us. <laughs> it's a day before the night before Christmas. This is right. <laughs> mm. Okay. <clears throat> All right. All right. So we'll wait to hear from you guys uh, at our next township meeting. Perfect. And just back to your point, the resident action does have a place to park right now. Okay. If you're concerned about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, excellent. We, we will have some back. <laughs> And, and let her, if you don't mind, letting her know that we're 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 working on it, and uh, that we want to make sure she has it. So. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I just want to take a, a moment to thank you for your support in 22. We're optimistic about 23. Yes. And yeah. uh, Merry Christmas. Have a safe, happy, and healthy New Year. You too. Thank you. You, all right. yours, thank you. all of you. You too. <laughs> yes. And everyone. Everyone. <laughs> Uh-huh. We're not done. We're not done. Yeah, Mark's gonna say, gonna close something. this out with a song. No, I have Public something. comment. Public comment. I have I have another additional business. We discussed oh. this last yeah. night at the historical commission. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh the Chester County Planning Commission and Chester County Historic Preservation Network have uh are are 
having their uh, 29th year of town tours and village walks program in 2023. Mm -hmm. The 2023, and I believe we did Carver Court at one time, the 2023 tour theme is Agricultural Heritage of Chester County. Well, how do you like that? We got a farm called Spackman Farm here. They've invited us to apply to be a part of it. If we were selected, uh, the the tours, it's a coordinated series of walking tours uh, from... Mm -hmm that will happen in different locations each week on Thursday evenings between June 8th and mid-August. Um, we would really like to participate. We have to have our application in by January 13th or it's too late. Um, we understand that there's some things that we would have to do. I mean, no, it would not be open buildings. We would like to have the possibly the smokehouse and spring house open and make sure that we've done some things we will do things to fill holes to make sure it's safe down there house would be closed but i think that it would be another step towards getting us uh going uh so everyone can think about that and maybe we'll talk about it at the next meeting because we we meet before the 13th correct yeah we meet on the 12th i believe right the town tour. yeah so if we can get that on the agenda if if the historical committee could just kind of put together we will okay put that together and maybe we can put that on the agenda for 12 for approval from this board if we're gonna excellent yeah. you know these people come to town they come to town right yeah and wow it's 7 30. i'm a little hungry you know we're here at 5 30. we missed dinner at 7 30. oh look there's a place to eat here in town you know this is how it works so that's that any other additional business public comment oh we have someone george george good evening i'm a nine count meeting house road good i'm evening. a member of several fraternal organizations and societies clubs uh, that have membership that comes through from throughout the county mm -hmm. and we meet in various places many times traveling on route 322 and a month ago the word got out that 322 was possibly going to be closed temporarily but fully closed so I've been getting a lot of questions about what's been happening there and I said I'm sorry we just don't have the word yet I want to thank you personally this evening for posting on the township website what you got from PennDOT on December 19th that it, that that project has been indefinitely postponed and there's more detailed information there on the website so thank you on behalf of myself and all the members of the organizations i belong to for providing the information that they can now feel comfortable knowing at this point yeah. thank you that thank you. Kudos awesome. goes to ray and abby yeah yeah they, they ray, ray stackhouse and abby swan have been really active working on that and staying up on pen dot so the kudos goes to those two and i would echo the chief's uh best wishes uh happy uh holidays and safe uh, new year thank you thank, thank you, you. Thank to you. you. Thank i'll you. just tag on to that uh on uh after we got the notice from ray i had posted on my uh count facebook page mm -hmm. and i said that the key the real key wording in in their statement is after schools are out nothing <laughs> you know this is not going to be happening until summer at, at at the earliest so knock on wood it won't be too big of a disturbance <clears throat> uh, there is no good time unfortunately no. there is no good time but it's a necessity all right uh any other public comment i just want to thank the township staff oh my um, goodness the yes. first responders in Cowan township yeah um as well as uh my fellow members of the board we had a really productive year yeah um you know uh, and to top it off tonight with uh finishing out the leds um, you know, something that I've worked on for nearly 18 years and yeah. to finally get to see that come to fruition, as well as two years of hard work to get Lerda uh, just uh, a week ago. Um, so I want to thank everybody for their hard work and wish you the best uh, Christmas and New Year and holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Let's keep yes. the band together. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely wanted to thank the staff. Kristen, uh, all the directors, uh, everybody that works in this township. Mm -hmm. 
um, you know, what we've been through this year in the last few years. I mean, everyone's, they've stuck it out and, and we have to be thankful. Kept this uh, township running, kept it going the entire time. So, and uh, of course, to our police, our fire department, even our EMS. Yes, <laughs> so we're all a team here. So thank you all. Thank you. All right, and I, and I will say, you know, uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, everyone, and all have, of you. have a Happy New Year. And My if anyone sentiments? else wants to chime in, My we sentiments? actually have a resident. Oh, really? Yes, we have we trouble with the hand okay. Mr. DeMayo. Is that you, Pete? Pete. Hi, Pete. Uh, you're muted there. Can you hear me? Yes, I do. Yeah, okay. I just want uh, two things. I just want to uh, thank you from the Coach Larry Public Library for your support this year and ongoing support to the commissioners, the Callan Township staff, and community. Our library is doing beautifully. So thank you always for uh, the support. And I did tell you previously I would be uh, representing the board to coming to the meetings. I go to all the governmental meetings for the board. So I was just at East Fowlfield with you. I'll be going to Coatesville and then I need South Coastal, Modena, uh, West Bradford. When I get through the rotation, I will be back. So thank you again. We appreciate all that you've done and, and your support is wonderful. And as a, a represent, as a community member, Levin Harvest Drive, thank you for the municipal bridge that stress has now turned into <laughs> joyful stress. So thank you so much for the municipal bridge. <laughs> that's 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 the New Year gift. So thank you. But from the board, from all our board to all of you, thank you and have a wonderful uh, 2023. Thank Great you, Pete. Thank that's you, Pete. Sure. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's. Thank, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, and I, I did want to point this out. I uh, We have three employees that actually... Uh, received a certificate uh, for 15 years of service with our township. Oh, wow. Yeah, Joe Arve, um, yes. Johnny Huggins from Public Works. Huggy. Uh, Joe is from uh, Coast Department. And Chris, I have yours in my truck. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to get over to the golf course, but- uh, For only nine ninety nine, you can have it tonight. <laughs> yeah, but hey, 15 years of service at a township, that, that's impressive. So thank you. Thank you all for that. Yes. And wish our public works uh, department uh, good luck with the storms coming. Yes. Oh, yeah. uh, Peace. Ready to go. <laughs> okay. Right. Safe. And, and, and safe honestly, they do not have to fix that shutter on the schoolhouse. That, that's first Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, so and uh, so we do have the Christmas tree lit up, or or yeah, that's a good point. I okay. Appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah. The Christmas tree. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, the mic is. Just to save myself some aggravation over the next couple of days. Yeah. The Christmas tree is lit, mm -hmm. and the sleigh, the sign, and some of the other things are not lit, and the schoolhouse is lit. We had some electrical issues that got resolved at the 11th hour mm -hmm. to get the tree up, and it will be lit until okay. next week. Excellent. It won't go off during the day. It'll stay lit. It looks great. Too. Okay. All right. Yeah, I just, yeah, I drove by the last couple nights. It's been dark. Uh, everything else was lit up. Just the, the tree dark. was that. Yeah. The dark. The dark. Thanks, well, Ray. I, I appreciate it. Yep. It's Christmas spirit. Okay. Any Anything else? You're, you're you're ready to hit that button. Yep, we're ready. All right, I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So move. So move. Second, all in favor. Aye. Aye. <laughs>